All right, so Mr. Pialis with the algebra, this is Unit 4, Topic 1, Lesson 5. Uh, we're going to be uh, substituting here. So for our warm-up, we're going to be substituting these numbers into each of these equations or functions. So if f of x is 3 to the x power, I'm going to set x equal to all of these domains. So if I put negative 2, so 3 to the x, 3 to the negative second. Well, negative second, if I want to make that a positive second, all I have to do is flip it which would become 1 over 3 to the second. And 3 to the second is the same thing as 1 over 9. So that's 1 over 9. And then you're going to see a pattern here. So to the negative first would be 1 over 3. And then the next one would be 1, and then 3, then 9, and then 27. 3 to the third power is 27. And what you're going to notice is that there's a geometric pattern here. So because all exponentials have a geometric pattern, it's times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Times three. Now I also want to point out that this... Uh, this warm-up has a little bit to do with a quadratic function because if you look at this as the center, because anything to the zeroth power is 1. So all of these equations, they're all going to have to the zero power is going to be 1. And then what you notice is that on each side, you've got reciprocals of each other. And that's kind of like a quadratic pattern. You've got the vertex in the middle, and then you've got the same number on both sides of the vertex. So I do want to point that out. It's kind of similar to what happens in a quadratic equation as well. So 5 to the x. So that's going to be 1 over 25, then 1 fifth, and then 1, and then times 5 would be 5, times 5 again would be 25, times 5 again would be 125. All right, change colors again. This time it's 10 to the negative second, so that would be 1 over 10 to the second, which is 1 hundredth and then 1 tenth, and then 1, because the 1's always in the middle, then 10, and then 100, that'd be 10 to the third, would be 1,000. All right, so the last one, so I'm just going to say these. So this would be 1 half, oh no, I won't. I'm going to write this one again. So 1 half, if you flip that to the second power, 2 to the second power would be 4. So this is actually 4 is the first term. And then it would be 2, and then 1. So this is really times a half, times a half, times a half, times a half. So the next one would be a half, and then the next one would be a fourth, and the next one would be an eighth. Now, I want to point out the fact that I want you, I'm hoping that you're noticing that 1 half is really the same numbers as 2 to the x, but they're in reversed order. So 2 to the first power, 2 to the second power, 2 to the third power, 2 to the fourth power. Because 1 half is really just a reciprocal of 2, it's going to be the same numbers with that 1 in the middle, but instead of 1 half being on this side, it's on this side. So it's basically the exact same as the opposite. Uh, 1 third, the first number would have been 9, and then 3, and then 1, and then 1 third, and then 1 ninth, and then 1 27th. I just said the answer. So let's move on. Uh, let's move on to this lesson. So this lesson has to do with falling objects. And what we're really going to be looking at is finding rates of change. That's really the main understanding of this lesson. We want to explore rates of change of different types of functions. So far, we've done linear functions. We've done exponential functions, which create hyperbolas. And we have done parabolas, which are quadratic functions. And by the time this lesson's over, I want you to be able to find the rate of change from any two points on that graph. Now, I just chose two points. Linear functions have a, a constant rate of change, meaning the rate of change never changes. But in a hyperbola and a parabola, the rate of change is always changing. So how much it's changing changes all the time. Yeah, I know, that sounds like a tongue twister. But if I put a third point right here, from first point to second point, the rate of change isn't as big as second point to third point. The reason, and I'm assuming that I've staggered them out equally. The reason I know that is because from here to here, it's gone up more. So therefore, it has a greater rate of change from here than it does from here to here. So same thing with the vertex here. If I put the vertex here, here's a point, here's a point. The, it has a greater rate of change between these two points than it does these two points. So everything here is about rate of change. So we're talking about a car traveling. And the car is traveling 30 miles per hour to begin with. And so I'm going to make each one uh, one second. So actually, yeah, 30 miles per second to begin with. And this is going to be 20 seconds over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, let's call this 5 seconds. This is our time, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so this is our time. 
and this is going to be our speed. Now, as if you probably read this scenario already, it says that the car started going 30 feet per second. I'm going to go by 5, so that's 10, that's 20, that's 30, 40, 50. Now that I've got everything set up, at the beginning of the story, you're going 30 meters per second. You're not stopped because what you want to do is you want to go around the car that's in front of you. In order to do that, you're going to have to speed up a little bit. So by the time the story ends, 20 seconds later, you've got a speed of 40 feet per second. Now, you will never be the same speed twice. No two seconds you'll ever have the same speed because your speed will be constantly changing at a constant rate. So, for instance, after four seconds and after five seconds, although they look like they're pretty much the same, they are not the same because after five seconds, you'll be going slightly faster than you were at four seconds. Same with six and seven and eight, nine, ten. You, your rate of change is always changing. What we want to do is we want to find what was the rate of change from the start of the story to the end of the story. And the way we're going to do that is by doing the slope formula, which is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So really what I'm doing in this case is really doing 20 minus 30 over, uh, I'm sorry, that was the y, sorry, 40 minus 30, 40 minus 30, which is 10 over, so we got our change of x's, that would be 20 minus 0, which would be 20. So we've got a rate of change of 1 half. So for, it's going up 1 for every right, for every right 2. Now, Keep in mind that we went by increments of five here. So it's not going up one box. It's going up one mile per hour. It's going up one right two, up one right two, up one right two, up one right two. Okay, so that's, that is the slope, okay? So that's the slope of the equation. But we want to know what was the average rate of change from the start to the end over the 20-second span. So from here to here, what was the rate of change? So to find the rate of change... Average speed, I'm sorry, average speed. I just keep saying rate of change. So the average speed. So we want to find the average. The average is basically like finding the mean. And the mean, you do, you take the two numbers and you add them together and you're going to divide by two because they're two numbers. So 40 was the ending speed plus 30 was the starting speed. You're dividing by two because there were two points on the graph. And that tells us that 70 divided by two means you had an average rate of change of 35 feet per second. Now that makes sense because if you started at 30 and you ended at 40, somewhere in the middle is going to be your actual average. Your average in this case was exactly 35 because that's right in the middle of those two lines, two points. Now finding the total distance. Now you might be wondering, well, if you're traveling for 20 seconds and you started going 30 miles, uh, 30 feet per second, can't you just multiply 30? No, because that's not the average. The average in this case was about 35 feet per second. If you multiply that by 20 seconds of an average of 35, that means you're going exactly 700 feet altogether. All right, so fourth question, explain how could you use area? So I could use area because what I could do is I could really just count the blocks underneath the entire line from start to finish. Now, if I want to find out how far you've traveled from here to here, all I have to do is count how many blocks are underneath. Remember, each block is worth five feet because for every right one, it was actually up five. Remember, I went up by five. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Now, this, this block right here, that block would actually represent slightly more than 30 because you started at 30 feet per second, but by the time that second, by the time it's been one second, you're now going about 30 and a half feet per second. So actually, you're going a little bit more than 30 feet in that first time frame. Now, we could estimate this and figure out the estimates for each one of these. And really what we're doing here is that, um, so we're actually doing a little bit of calculus here. We're finding the average amount underneath each one. Boy, I'm... I'm, I'm couldn't think of it right now. There's a calculus principle based upon this. I just can't think of it right now. Sorry. Uh, I'll have to uh, I'll have to mention it in another video. But basically, it's the idea that in calculus, if you find the average of underneath each of these uh, lines based on a limit from 0 to 20, you should be able to add them all up and find the sum. Uh, what is that called? It was some guy's name. It was something Bernard something sum. Um, yeah, sorry, just Google Bernard sum. 
Um, can't think of it right now. Um, oh, well, doesn't matter. So if I add all of those up and find how much the total of the squares would be, it would be exactly 700. All right. Um, moving on to the next question. So if you want to find what will the penny speed be after one second? So we know that it said on the very beginning of the first page, it says that objects fall at 32 feet per second, and then it'll fall after two seconds, it'll fall 32 feet per second faster. Now, keep in mind that gravity does make things fall faster as they fall down, but there is a limit to how fast things can fall. Things can only fall at 1G because... 1G represents the amount of gravity that it affects. So you can't have uh, something fall at 2Gs per second unless there's an outside force because we have what's called uh, terminal velocity, which means that is the fastest that an item can fall without an outside force being acting upon that item. Yeah, I know. I'm bringing in a little bit of science here. Uh, so let's just assume there is no terminal velocity and that it's always going to be increasing by 32 feet per second. What will the penny speed be after one second? So if I want to find the average rate of change... So when you put when you drop the penny before you drop it after zero seconds it's gone zero feet, but then it's going to by the end of that second it's going to have an av it's going to have a speed of thirty two feet per second. Divide that by two data points and that gives you an average speed of sixteen feet per second. All right, so now we know the average speed. So we know this was zero, and I'm going to go by tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's one second, and that's two seconds. I can go by fives again, setting up my graph. So that would be 30, that would be 40, and that would be 50. All right, I see how my time's going a little bit high here. So that would be 32 right there. So it would go like that, okay? So that means by the end of the third, of the, the end of the first second, you're going 32 feet per second. But when you started, you were going zero. That means the average speed you're going was 16. So if you do that for one second, you've gone 16 feet total. If you did that by for two seconds, you would not be going 32 feet because actually your speed is increasing here. So your speed would actually be an average of 32 feet per second. Multiply that by two seconds. So if you did it for two seconds, you'd actually be going 64 feet total. All right, I'm going to skip this astronaut question, and I'm going to go straight to the homework. So the homework, you're going to need to, you need to use a graphing calculator, which I do not have at the moment. So I'm going to have to pull up a regular calculator, and this is going to be made difficult on me. That's what I get for not having that graphing calculator. So you're going to use this equation. So you're going to go y equals on your uh, calculator. And then you're going to uh, put that equation in, negative 16x squared plus 1730. 1730 is how high the building is, and then it's decreasing by negative 16 squared. So negative 16 times itself, which was 256, negative uh, 15, so negative 16, oh, I'm sorry, I, I did that wrong. So 1 squared is 1. So that means it decreased by 16 here. And then 2 squared would be 4. 4 times 16 would be 64. So it must have decreased by 64. So 17, 14 minus the 64 I just said means this has to be 1650. Because this time it decreased by 64. And then next one, 3 times itself is 9. 9 times 16 is 144 so it's going to decrease by 144 this time 1650 minus 144 equals 1506 now i am going to i don't have a graphing calculator i'm doing it by hand now it's going to take way too long and i'm already at 14 minutes has the penny hit the ground after 10 seconds the answer you should get is no because when you get this answer right here you're still i wish i remember exactly what it was it was 100 and something feet find the average rate of change of the penny from zero to one okay so from here to here, it decreased by 16. So all I'd have to do is add the two up. Oh, I'm sorry, find the average rate of change. So it looks like it's decreasing by 16 per second. Explain why the penny's average speed is different from the interval 0 to 1 second than it is from 6 to 7. The reason why is because from 6 to 7, it's traveling faster. And if it's traveling faster, then it's going to be decreasing by more. So that's the reason why it has a rate of change that's greater than 16. All right, thanks again for watching. Please give it a like if it helped you learn something. I, wow, I've never gone to 15 minutes. I'm just going to kind of wait. Thank you. Have a great day. And 15 minutes is almost.